The darkness continues. Led by Blade, a group of vampires use the dark force to blot out the sun, creating an eternal night and unleashing violence upon the world. Blade and the Blood Coven, a group of super-powered vampires, also launch an attack on the Avengers, capturing several members of the team, transforming Black Panther into a vampire and seizing control of the impossible city, the Avengers Orbital Headquarters. The remaining Avengers align themselves with Dracula and Blade's vampire hunting daughter Bloodline. Along with Tigra, Hunter's Moon, and Spider-Man, the group made their way to Doctor Strange's sanctum to seek his aid. Strange remained trapped in an astral form, his physical body having been grievously wounded by Blade during an earlier attack. But before the heroes could formulate a plan, Spider-Man began transforming into a vampire. Blood Hunt, Volume 1, Issue 3, The First Blasphemy. At the impossible city lair of the Lord of All Vampires, Blade, Black Panther finds what Blade sent him after, buried deep under Wakanda. These events involve Black Panther searching for the Temple of the First Blasphemy. The temple has been beneath the earth in Wakanda since the fall of old Atlantis. Blade says, then you know what to do. Have the city spin up its mass translocation drives and bring it to me. The Scarlet Witch taunts Blade saying, with one less Blood Coven member, that means the Avengers have won this battle. This is the second battle and their eyes are open to the truth. The Blood Coven feeds off the strongest blood for their strength. As you know, the blood of a god, Hulk, or superheroes is stronger and makes the vampires even more powerful. At the Sanctum Sectorium, Miles Morales now turned, launches his first attack on Blade's daughter Bloodline. He chases after her but Vision grabs him. However, Miles quickly retaliates with a spider blast. Bloodline begs Spider-Man, don't make me. Clea uses the crimson bands of Sitarak to hold Spider-Man and then Doctor Strange employs the eye of Agamotto to show him the truth. Miles Morales says I'm back as he somehow regains his senses though he is still a vampire. He asks Brielle, are you okay? Miles Morales continues. Oh no, he told me to hunt for her and I had to. I couldn't fight it. The message from Blood Hunt issue one where Blade was speaking to Miles Morales was Blade turning him into a vampire with a switch when he saw a bloodline. He could not control himself, Doctor Strange says. You're not alone, Spider-Man. He came to us as a friend and then he struck. Now I also bear his curse. Doctor Strange is a vampire and is also in his actual plane form where Clea took out in Doctor Strange issue five. So there are two Doctor Stranges. The vampire human Doctor Strange and the astral plane Doctor Strange. Brielle, also known as Bloodline and the daughter of Blade, does not know who has been orchestrating all of this. Captain Marvel says, you don't know? Doctor Strange adds, you didn't tell her? Dracula, surely you know who is responsible for all this. Dracula responds, how do you think that conversation would have gone, Strange? Come with me, child. In order to save the world, you must strike down your father, the new Lord of Vampires, Blade. Bloodline is shocked to learn that her father is the new leader of the vampires. Dracula then says, yes, child. Child, your father, Eric Brooks, known as Blade, has led his legion of the night to take over the world. He has engineered the darkening of the skies, broken the mighty Avengers, and now you are all that's left to stop them. This is why your father has unleashed a blood hunt upon you. Dracula continues, as your bloodline, you represent his only weakness. Only you or his hand could strike him down. Dracula has brought Brielle from Atlanta to the front lines of the war to kill her father. Brielle does not believe her dad is that crazy. Tigger jumps in and says, and we're supposed to believe you're on our side, Dracula? President of the Vampire Nation? Dracula replies, if you please. And that is exactly what you're supposed to believe, because it is the truth. My Vampire Nation is precisely that, a nation. One that I have bled to build. One that will fall like all the human nations if we do not stop Blade. So Dracula and the Dracula Nation are aligned to stop Blade, because Blade will kill the Vampire Nation. Hunter's Moon says enough. The world is dying and we argue. Save it until we save everyone. Dr. Strange agrees and says, it appears to me the crisis involves three vectors, the dark force stealing the sun, the vampires rampaging, and Blade. Then suddenly everyone wonders where Brielle is. She ran off. Miles Morales feels for Brielle and tells Dracula, tell her that 
she has to strike down her dad and expect her to believe you. Shut up, Lord of Vampires. I've got to go look for her. Miles Morales goes after Brielle, followed by Dracula, who says, I will not let my only hope of victory just run away. The story of Brielle running off will be picked up in the tie-in series of Miles Morales, Spider-Man issue 21, and Dracula, Blood Hunt issue 2. As Doctor Strange calls out for Dracula and Spider-Man not to go, Clea says, we do not have time to chase after them. Stefan, it is probably a good idea that Miles Morales and Dracula are going after Bloodline because Blade will throw everything at her, get her. Doctor Strange in actual form will get aid for the Dark Force. Tigra and Hunter's Moon will raise an army that the vampires cannot kill, turn, or terrify, but they too require one more person. This leads to Avengers who will handle Blade and the Blood Coven. The problem is that he is safe in the impossible city, and he has Thor, Wanda, and T'Challa up there with him. Sam Wilson, Captain America, says we have to draw him out. So the plan is set. Clea sends Tigra, Hunter's Moon, and one of the other to a far, far away place. Doctor Strange and Clea then disappear. The remaining Avengers will not wait. Captain Marvel says, we're the Avengers. We have to tell the people of our world that they're not alone, that they can't give up. We need to give them hope, and we need to, to dare Blade to come down and break that hope. Captain Marvel wants to broadcast around the whole Earth and ask Tony, can you do it? Tony replies, all of them. Captain Marvel says, then set up a broadcast. Sam, you're up. Sam Wilson, Captain America replies, me? But you're the chairperson. Captain Marvel responds, yeah, but you're the icon. And this, this is what T'Challa saved for. As Iron Man plugged in an auto translation for Sam Wilson, Captain America prepares to give a speech. In an iconic scene, Sam Wilson, Captain America inspires hope. I am Sam Wilson, Captain America speaking for the Avengers. Things are bad, I know. Like all of you, you've been fighting the vampires since the sun went out. Like all of you, you've been hurt and we've bled, have lost. But we've been here before. We're still here. This world has seen evil time and time again. Aliens, monsters, tyrants, madmen, those who had taken our homes, our freedom, our lives. And every time the people of Earth told them no. As Sam Wilson gives his speech in Halifax, they raise their arms against the vampires. In the impossible city, Blade is furious. In Manhattan, Bloodline is running. As Sam Wilson, Captain America continues his speech. When the Katari came here, we told them no. When Null came here, we told them no. When Hydra took over, we told them no. When Galactus came here, we told him no. In Mexico City, they raised their arms in solidarity. Meanwhile, Tigra, Hunter's Moon, and a mystery man are in Asgard. In Latveria, Doctor Strange and Clea visit Doctor Doom. Even as a vampire, and even before turning, Black Panther had his challenges with Sam. T'Challa says, Very good, Sam. Offering encouragement. If you want our home, we'll have to fight for it. If you want our world, you'll have to take it. If you want our blood, you'll pay for every drop. And if you take our lives, we will be avenged. We will avenge the dead. We will protect the living because those are the things we owe you when we call ourselves Avengers. Things are bad, but as long as we breathe, as long as we have hope in our hearts, we will tell the vampires the same thing we told the others. No, we're still here. We'll win like we've won all those times before. Just just hold on until the sun shines again, because it will. Captain America out. Iron Man successfully translated and broadcasted Sam Wilson's Captain America's powerful speech. It mirrored the same speech that T'Challa and Sam Wilson delivered to the impossible city. Not long ago in Avengers 51, Sam Wilson continues to appeal to the transformed Black Panther, hoping he can still recognize reason. Captain Marvel expresses uncertainty about whether this strategy will lure Blade out of the impossible city. She senses that this this blade is different. Not the cool, calculated blade they know, but someone else wearing his skin. Blade is anything but cool as he screams. Panther, plans have changed. Retarget the mass translocation drives. Your friends have decided they will not simply lie down and die, which I could forgive, but they had had the audacity to try to inspire hope in this doomed world, and that I cannot countenance. Not when my triumph is at hand. Blade, uncharacteristically, not himself, rounds up the blood cup and tells Panther to send the Temple of the First Blasphemy to another location. At Central Park in New York City, Blade declares, from the caves of Wakanda to New York City, which will serve as the grave of the Avengers, I will drop my great prize unseen in the city since the days of old Atlantis upon their city. The Temple of the First Blasphemy will be their tombstone. This ominous structure has appeared in Central Park and will clearly be an obstacle for the heroes 
of Earth next. Blood Hunt, Volume 1, Issue 4.